great to be here. Okay, who's my timekeeper? Okay, just. You know, it's so funny. I, for many years, I spoke for Reverend Ike, and that was a 45-minute talk. So then I come here, and you give me 20 minutes, and you're strict about 20 minutes. So last time, I was like, oh, am I on time? So this week, I wrote a talk knowing that it's going to fit in the parameters. But before you flash the sign, I want to say something. Uh, I want to expound on what Didi said. And uh, it was uh, the week before last, I'm ordained 26 years. Of course, I went to seminary when I was in grade school. And I know spiritual community, and this is an amazing spiritual community. And you may not know what you got, as my mama would say. You ain't know what you got, so you, it's what you get. Well, what you get here is amazing. The energy here is awesome. You have incredible speakers each week. And I just want to take a minute, not even a minute, because I know there's time. I want to just take a few seconds and really acknowledge uh, Nick and Joseph, because the amount of work. something else in mind. Could you stand up for a moment and let's raise our hands up. You stand up, you two, and you get in the receiving mode. And so please repeat after me, Joseph and Nicholas. Joseph and Nicholas. Put your hands up like this and you guys receive. We love you. We, love we, you. Bless, you. we bless you. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. God loves you. God loves you. And you guys rule. It takes a lot to do spiritual community. And one more thing before I go on the clock. I, I am giving a handout today because I'm giving you real spiritual food because I'm only out here, what, I don't know, two, three times a year, or however you know, often you invite me. And so I want to make sure you have takeaway. And yeah, take notes. It's a good idea. But I want to make sure that you have the main principles and a little handout sheet. And Janet, Grace, and I will give them to you upon completion. OK, go. OK, I'm looking, Nicholas. OK. A new young monk arrives at the monastery, and he's assigned to help the other monks copy the old canons and laws of the church by hand. And he notices, however, that all the monks are copying from copies and not from the original manuscripts. So the new monk goes to the head monk to question him about this, pointing out that if someone had made even a small error in the first copy, it would never be picked up. In fact, the error would be continued all the subsequent copies year after year after year. And the head monk said, we've been copying from the copies for centuries, my son, but you make a very good point. <laughs> and so the head monk goes down into the dark caverns underneath the monastery where the original manuscripts are held and locked in a vault that hadn't been opened for hundreds and hundreds of years. So he goes in there. And hours and hours go by, and nobody sees the old abbot. And the young monk gets worried, and he goes downstairs to look for him, and he sees the abbot is banging his head against the wall, his forehead, and it's, it's, it's battered, it's bruised, and he's crying uncontrollably. And the young man says to the old abbot, Father, Father, what is wrong? And the abbot, he's choking, and his, his voice is creaking, and he replies, No, 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 they got it wrong. The word is celebrate. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> okay, for those of you who didn't get it, because when I first read it, I'm like, what? Celebrate, celebrate, get it? Okay, that was for those of you who were like me, didn't get it. <laughs> right? Uh, this is a new thought spiritual community, new thought. And, and I'm very curious, who here has studied new thought? Okay, because you know, I realize a whole chunk of your talk is taken to explaining to people what spiritual principle it is. So then I thought I'm going to have a conversation with you if you don't already do it, and you probably do, is that, because I see you have a handout sheet, is to write something that's a real basis so that people can check it out so then I can talk longer by really talking less, right? So Ernest Holmes is the founder of religious science. It's also called Science of Mind. It is one of the new thought religions. There's also divine science. There's also uh, unity. In fact, I just spoke out at the International New Thought Alliance over in Phoenix, and there was a conglomeration of these, uh, these uh, New Thought teachings. So Ernest Holmes said, the divine plan is one of freedom. Nicholas told me to talk about freedom. 
Bondage is not God ordained. That's a quote. And so our forefathers felt the same way. Part of the Declaration of Independence, which the part that Thomas Jefferson wrote said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. He also said, the God who gave us life gave us liberty at the same moment. Ernest Holmes goes on to say, if you have the big thick book, the Science of Mind textbook, freedom is the birthright of every individual soul. Our inherent nature is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. And we do well to listen to our inner voice for it tells us of a life wonderful in scope, a love beyond our fondest dreams, and a freedom with which our soul craves. It may seem that external factors limit our freedom, but the truth is that we're always free to choose our ideas and our thoughts. And uh, study Viktor Frankl if you want to learn more about that. And this is how we determine our circumstances. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind according to the strength and the desire contained within the thought. And you've heard me say a million times that feeling is the fuel that propels thought into manifestation. So that's your truth lesson. Now your real lesson. <laughs> So today I want us to declare our independence from the tyranny of old ways that we've thought or old ways that we've felt or old ways that we've spoken. And I want to, the ways that we've believed and acted that really don't serve who we are as divine creations of God, beings of light and love. And because within us that the universe is always for greater expansion and expression of itself. It's always seeking more and more. I love it. I love when I see a, a little dandelion throat blowing through the crack. I think that's like the most spiritual thing in the whole universe because it's got n like nothing and it grows and, that, and that's amazing. That's how it is. We have that within us. It's in our DNA. You ready for this one, Janet? Divine natural attributes. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Wish I made it up. Okay. So today is our spiritual independence day. Please repeat after me. Um, today is our spiritual independence day. Today is my spiritual independence day. Okay, no more repeating because you're taking from my time. <laughs> I declare independence from things that no longer serve my highest good. You can repeat it in your own head. I declare independence from my negative self-talk. I declare independence over fear. That's when you forget everything's all right. I declare independence over feelings of guilt. I fear independence over feelings of, of remorse, coulda, shoulda, woulda. I declare independence over those thoughts that have just weighed me down. Those thoughts, I declare independence from ones that have kept me blocked to the past, kept me tethered, if you will, to the past. And I declare independence from limited ideas about who I am. Okay, let's breathe that in. <sighs> Doesn't that feel good? The universe abhors a vacuum. So now that we have mentally and literally uh, eliminated and declared and clean out, let's fill it in with some positive. So as we declare our independence from those things that no longer serve us, whether it's people, places, things, or thoughts, because sometimes we have to separate in our life. We we're hanging out with people, and we need to sort of tie them back to the universe. And, and be with people that correspond and respond to who we are. It's, so it's that's not our thinking, it's also our actions and our experience. So we have the freedom then to strengthen and deepen our connection to the divinity of our being, the divine in our being. We have the freedom. And so as we declare our independence over all this stuff, the guilt, the shame, and the past, the blah, 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 we have the, for, the freedom to forgive. and. That is huge, and I want to look at this for a moment. I want to look at freedom, and this is part of your handout, so if you don't get this, I'm going to give it to you. I want to give you a great technique for forgiveness. You may have heard it. It's called ho opopono opono. Ho opono opono. Did I get it right? Good. I see a couple of heads shaking. It literally means to make right. Forgiveness is ultimately, without a big long lesson about forgiveness, it ultimately is about forgiving yourself. 
that's where it all ends up. No matter what anybody has said or done, there's always, we're going, oh, I shoulda, coulda, why didn't I do this or that? So it's about forgiving you. And anyway, they're out on a Hawaiian cruise vacation, not even caring how you're feeling. It's all about you getting right in your own consciousness. People do the best that they can with the resources that they have at the time. So that's one thought for healing that's very, for forgiveness, it's very healing to realize, you know, the person did the best they could in their state of consciousness, and even you. I say, you know, God, I should have known better. No, I knew better. Well, if you knew better, you would have done better. And even if you think you intellectually knew better, unless you had embodied it and really embraced it and understood it, then you wouldn't have done better. So it's where your consciousness is. Now, this Hopo Ono Ono is <laughs> the big H. It's an ancient Hawaiian art of healing. It's a way of resolving conflicts between people and families or group. Dr. Hugh Len is the creator of it, and he believed that the universe of God, the universe or God, whatever you choose to call it, was inside of us. And he developed this method for individuals to intellectually meet whatever they would encounter in your daily life because stuff happens. I like to say shift happens. There's an F in the word. Shift happens. I'll give you a, uh, I got bumper stickers when we get home. Shift happens. And he, de he declared it, decreed it as a way of clearing or cleaning out our past conditioning in our subconscious mind. So the goal of the practice is to, to return to zero, you know, neutral zone, ground zero, neutral. And that's when our memory is not running us or our consciousness. And it's not, you know, no longer is our past conditioning keeping us locked in old behavior and consciousness. So it's when we're at peace with whatever we encounter. So here it is. It's, a four, it's four phrases. It's real easy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Thank, you. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. One more time. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. And I love you. Now, most people just take those four phrases and chant them and, and do my kind of thing. You know, I have my CD of jingles putting affirmation to music, so it's my kind of idea that you take them and say it over and over and sing it to yourself. Now, that's how most people do it. They just take those phrases and say them over and over again. However, some people will take them and they'll say, I'm sorry that, and they'll fill it out. Please forgive me for blank, or thank you for, and then end it with I love you. Okay, all those spirit people can come in the room too. <laughs> you know, I've had a lot of those doo-doo-doo. Ever since my dad passed, I've had a lot of those unusual experiences like that. So I'll just say hi, dad. Somebody just came in then. So for instance, dear body, as I don't know about you because, you know, I stopped rocking a bikini a couple of years ago, so. <laughs> Dear body, I am sorry that I have often looked in the mirror and said that you are fat. Please forgive me for devaluing you and making you feel unattractive and consequently insecure and uncomfortable. Would you pick up my bag, please? I think Keelan knocked over, uh, somebody, my, I knocked over my, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And so isn't that what we do is that, you know, so then you go, oh, you know, I'm, mm, mm, so please forgive me for devaluing myself. Please forgive me for making me, and then thank you for allowing me to focus on the truth and what is loving and what is kind and, and by, by living in that way, and then I love you. So if you want to make the extended version, got it? If you don't get it, you call me, you send me an email, we'll take it. But it's real simple. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. you. Keelan, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Okay, I want to look at the individual phrases quickly. I'm sorry, that encourages us to take responsibility to own up to the circumstances, what we're doing, rather than denying it, because a lot of times we deny things. We don't even want to look at it. We don't even want to face it. 
And so we really own our, our feelings and our actions and our thoughts and, and whatever is going on in our life experience because it's all a result of our consciousness. Please forgive me, we just reviewed forgiveness, encourages us to open ourselves to forgive because that's important to be available, to allow it. And then thank you, encourage us to be grateful. Plato said a grateful mind is a great mind which eventually attracts great things. And so that then allows us to look for the hidden benefit in a circumstance. God is in everything, there isn't good in everything. And so even though something might be an apparent misfortune or some kind of negativity that you may encounter in your daily life, it encourages us to be appreciative and grateful and to, to translate these ways of being into daily attributes for daily living. Okay. You know, it's funny, I talk and I listen to myself to make sure I get it right. <laughs> because, you know, sometimes truth can sound like mumbo jumbo. And I want to always make sure that we can get it and utilize it. So, the I love you, uh, Dr. Hugh Lewin calls it that we're saying I love you to the divine. But it's also for what we're focusing upon. So saying loving has the effect of opening our hearts. And so I just got the five minutes on, and darn, I got such a good talk here. Let me skip that, skip that, skip that. Okay, uh, the Buddha, and this I think is important, he, uh, Dr. Hugh said they help, I don't know if he said this, but they heal and release those things the Buddha called the three poisonings, which is clinging, aversion, and self-delusion. And so when we practice this, because we're one with all life everywhere, and I said this morning when we prayed us in, we are the bringers of the light, we're the bringers of love and peace and wholeness, so that as we do this, it ripples out into the world and heals the world. The final thing I want to talk about is independence from the past and to live in the now moment. And, <laughs> okay, God, what do I tell the people? Okay, so there's a, there's a story of, a, it's a parable, and it talks about uh, this king who said, draw a picture of peace. And so one picture, one person, there was some kind of contest or something, one person drew a picture of a beautiful calm lake and it was the mirror uh, uh, for these beautiful mountains and there was a blue sky, there were fluffy white clouds and people saw it and they said, wow, that's a perfect picture of peace. And then the other picture had mountains too, but they were rugged and bare and there was this angry sky and, and, and the rains were falling and there was lightning and the, down the side of the mountain there was a waterfall and it didn't look peaceful, this picture, but if you looked closely, you could see behind the waterfall was this itty bitty bush. And in the bush, there was growing a crack in the rock. And there was that in the bush, there was a mother bird and she had a, a nest. And in the nest, around all this angry storms and this angry water rushing, the mother bird had sitting in her nest in perfect peace, in perfect peace. And so the king gave that picture to the prize because it really reflected even in the midst of turmoil that we can in fact be in perfect peace. And so today I call upon us to declare independence over the past and that we can have the freedom to live in possibilities. We can have the freedom to live full out. We can have the freedom to live in peace and experience greater and greater ease, greater and greater peace, greater and greater joy and all good. And there's a formula, my friend Janet Grace Nelson, check her out, JanetGraceNelson.com, famous inspirational world traveler teacher. She came with me today. This is a four-step formula she taught me and she learned it from one of her teachers who learned it from one of their teachers. You ready? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. More please. More please. Even better. Even better. Okay, I wrote it down for you, okay? <laughs> but isn't that fantastic? So yesterday we're doing something really good happened. I hear Janet going, yes, thank you. More please, even better. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's, we're going to teach that to the people tomorrow. <laughs> So saying yes is about our ability to receive. So what does that mean? That means you gotta stop telling your story. I don't wanna hear your story anymore about how your husband took up with a chick who was 20 years younger and moved in and you got moved out. I don't wanna hear it anymore. Stop telling it. And I think, by the way, if you have a good counselor and they validate you empathetically, you stop telling it anyway. But stop telling your story. And when you say yes, you're saying, okay, universe, I'm ready, let me have it. 
saying thank you. That's a cause of energy. I already told you that about a minute ago. More please. The word more means in greater quantity. It means greater measure, greater degree. It means greater number or it means a larger extent. And even better, means superior quality, greater excellence. It means advantageous. It means moving forward. Anything that's more useful or desirable or advantageous is better. And here's the good news. I'm going to stop in 30 seconds. And the other good news is Dr. David Hawkins, he wrote that book, Power Versus Force. Just a 2% shift in your thinking will make all the difference in the world. It's only 2%. That means you could just leave here today and take this little handout I'm going to give you and practice this all day. That's going to be like a 20% shift. And if you made that 2% shift, just think of the difference in your life. You will declare your independence from lack and limitation, from living in the past, and for all the gunk and the stuff that holds you down. So I invite you today, make a personal declaration right here, right now. And then you will ignite the fireworks of the divinity within you. And so begins your lesson.